This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Topping the news tonight, a new bridge connecting East Grand Bahama to Freeport could be unveiled in a matter of months. Work began on this major infrastructural project several months ago, and tonight the Grand Bahama Port Authority is giving its stamp of approval to the work carried out so far. Megan Shepard has the story. The new bridge at the Grand Bahama Highway has been under construction for some seven to eight months. Vice President of Building and Development Services at the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Arthur Jones, says the team is satisfied that the bridge is starting to take shape. He adds that the bridge will give an alternative route to East Grand Bahama and is expected to take half the time. Behind me is the Grand Bahama Highway and you can see that it comes to this thing we are calling the bridge or the Jack Haywood Bridge. And uh, we are going to now, we've put all the structure into place, we've put the embankments on both sides of the waterway. And what we have to do now is to put the girders and beams and slabs across to complete the connection. And we would have a bridge and then we have to do the finishing details. All Bahamas construction is spearheading the project while wall construction is handling the earth moving aspect. Jones says safety is a top priority for all involved. We are very satisfied with what they've done to date. Um, right now at this stage they're building some seawalls. Uh, the seawalls would define the actual minimum span in the waterway that uh, Seacraft can get in and out. Um, once we've completed that, we will level the areas there and put in some more vertical supports because we're going to be spanning from here over there, but we're going to put in two more sets of vertical supports. The bridge is expected to be completed by September with a budget of $4 million. Jones said that this project was a passion of the late Sir Jack Hayward and naming it in his honor is only fitting. We really are very thankful to him and to the St. George's for agreeing and for doing what was necessary to build this bridge. I think it happened automatically. Uh, he wanted the bridge so badly, he did so much to get us a bridge that um, I think it was the St. George's who began to say it's the Jack Haywood Bridge and uh, everybody uh, started saying it's the Jack Haywood Bridge and uh, it has now been officially determined that the name would be the Jack Haywood Bridge. Megan Shepard, ZNS Network News. The Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas is celebrating 80 years of broadcasting and a new chapter is about to unfold right here on Grand Bahama. Earlier today, a press briefing was held to announce the launch of a new energetic radio station that will cater to a younger audience. Shashina Rowe reports. It's a proud moment for the staff of ZNS Northern Service as the announcement was made by the General Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, Diana Swan, of the relaunch of 104.5 FM station, which will be dubbed Power 104.5. She says the staff has sacrificed much to get the new equipment, and now a new sound room has been constructed and outfitted with the latest in technology. Swan explains that this has been in the making since 2006. We got together as a staff. I was then the um, deputy general manager here in Northern Service and we were able to do a number of shows and some other activities to raise the funds for the transmitter back in 2006. We officially launched it where we took a 10 a.m. sound and, and were broadcasting on 104.5 and so what nine years later we are now able to uh, witness the relaunch of Power 104.5 FM with an actual station. And if you're wondering what will happen to a 10 a.m., the general manager says it will cater to a more mature and religious audience. Presently, 104.5 FM and a 10 a.m. broadcast simultaneously. But Swan says despite the split, a 10 a.m. will continue to be 
the voice of the North. It, it is so deserving of so much more. Eh? It has been everything to everyone in the Northern Bahamas. And so what we hope to do now is to gradually fade a 10 a.m. into all religious station, gospel station. Um, we intend to service more the religious uh, community, get more churches to come on board with their programs. That will take a period of time. And so hopefully after the launch on, on June 29th, um, a 10 a.m., our listeners will hear a change in a 10 a.m. A 10 a.m. will remain a network, uh, will be networked, when 104.5 will not have the interruptions like 1540 or a 10 a.m. Power 104.5 FM will feature a mixed music format, and the programming will be designed to appeal to a younger audience. I am very confident that we are the leaders in this field, and I am confident that they will have to catch up once we get on. So I, 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 I'm not afraid of, of the independent stations. We, as a corporation, are not afraid of the independent stations. We've been doing this for 79 years, and come next year it will be 80. And so we welcome um, other stations. It's good. You have a choice. But because of the staff that we have and the talent that we have and the dedication from the staff we have, we feel that they are all committed to serving the public. With the new station, the general manager says additional employment will be needed. We will have to be very creative in the manner in which we bring them on in that we will be more, it will be more contractual staff than uh, permanent members of staff. We find or f and feel that it will be more advantageous and affordable to go contractual rather than permanent, but we will begin advertising for announcers. Um, the staff, the administration staff, will be able to uh, deal with 104.5 FM, so announcers are what we will be looking for. Power 104.5 FM will be officially launched on June 29th. Thank you, Shashina. Another sign of hope for the Grand Bahama economy as a business establishment which was closed for the past six years is about to make a comeback. The new owners have big plans for the beachfront property. Italia Hall has the details. The former Stone Crab restaurant was open in 1972. The restaurant was a popular spot among local and international customers, but in 2009, the restaurant on Taino Beach closed its doors. In December of last year, Olivia Page, a frequent visitor to the Bahamas since the age of three, purchased the Stone Crab restaurant. She says she will endeavor to restore the restaurant to its former glory. And I met um, Mario Donato, who's the owner of who was the owner of the Stone Crab restaurant, I asked him if he would be willing to sell and he um, said no. <laughs> so so uh, it was a three-year battle to get it from him. Um, but finally we managed and uh, I, I really would love to just bring back this old feeling of yes, Let's 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 get this island back to shape. Let's let's bring something new. Paje says she holds fond memories of the old Stone Crab restaurant, and she was determined to reopen the restaurant on the beach. I was always taken to the Stone Crab restaurant with my parents, uh, which was always a great event. And um, when time changed and the uh, hurricane hit the island so bad and everything kind of ran down, I saw the International Bazaar close and I saw everything close. So um, I could not believe that this island, which has so much to give and so much beauty, would just run into nothing. Paget's stepfather, attorney Branford Christie, says the name of the restaurant will remain the same, but the logo will change. The restaurant, which was only open during the evening hours, will now be open in the daytime as well. He adds that the menu will include Bahamian seafood and shrimp will be the only seafood that will be imported. The estimated capital investment uh, in respect of the acquisition of the Stone Crab restaurant property and the renovation of the seriously dilapidated structure um, is U.S. dollars $2.4 million. The contract for renovation at the old Stone Crab restaurant was awarded to Freeport Construction Company Limited. President Craig Silvera says this project will be a huge success. One of the major issues for her is the uh, roof renovation. So uh, she's going to keep the same look, the same cedar shakes. So we're going to restore all the original roofing to look the same, and then she'll renovate the interior with basically the same footprint. 
and uh, and add a few new features. Of course, he's adding all new hurricane glass. And then the back deck will be all open to the beach. It is estimated that some 20 Bahamians will be employed during the renovation process. That's including subcontractors. 25 Bahamians will be employed full-time during the first year of the operation. It's Halia Hall, Saturnest Network News. The government's Fresh Start program is making a difference in the lives of young people on Grand Bahama. The latest crop of students graduated from the program this past weekend. Kimberly Mullings has more. 60 students successfully completed the Fresh Start program this year. Director of Youth for the Nation, Kay Darren Turnquest, attended the commencement ceremony offering encouraging words to those graduating. In my very short time as being a director of youth, that sometimes the platform for young people in our country has nothing to do with politics, it has nothing to do with government, it has to do with the culture that young people ought to be seen and not heard. But I'll say to you that common sense will take you very far. And that you must always understand that you do not ever need someone to validate you. You must first validate yourself. Nobody cares where you came from or who you were. What we care about today is who you are today. Minister of Grand Bahama Dr. Michael Darville has witnessed three semesters of the Fresh Start program. He endorses the life-changing initiative. I am so pleased to see how the program has not only transformed your life, but has also transformed your outlook on life. It has even made you more confident in who you are. Dr. Darville says he's pleased with the level of success the program has achieved on Grand Bahama Island. Through the revised and revamped Fresh Start program, we are proving the critics wrong. Our graduates from the Fresh Start program is ready for employment, they are ready for entrepreneurship, and they are ready to make their impact on the island of Grand Bahama. Keynote speaker of the Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, Dr. Daniel Johnson, had a special message for the students. We know you have the smarts, you got the energy, you got the talent, you have the treasure. And somehow the system that we are using didn't quite connect. It didn't turn something on in your brain that said, this could be you. And so I'm going to start with you all tonight by apologizing for that and telling you we can fix that. The minister also urged parents and guardians to speak positivity into the lives of their children. Parents out there, be very careful because children become what you tell them. Children become what you tell them. Yeah? So I want to congratulate all of you all in here tonight for defying the odds taking that opportunity to seize the second chance though. This year's Fresh Start graduates received BTVI certifications in welding, general maintenance, computer and business application, accounts and QuickBooks, and acrylic nails, as well as Bahama Host certifications. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Stay with us, the Northern Edition will continue in a moment. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. St. Paul's Methodist College was the first school to be built by the Grand Bahama Port Authority in the early 60s. The Methodist School has excelled over the years and hundreds of students have graduated from that institution. The school is celebrating its 50th anniversary and Principal Lynn Glinton says a number of activities are planned. At the time it was considered to be in the heart of the city because this was the, the city itself and the school was placed right in the midst of it. All the residential areas, Drake Avenue, Clive Avenue, Hudson, were the areas built for the workers and the planners of the city at that particular time. School chaplain Reverend Dr. J. Emmett Ware is appealing to all former graduates to stay in touch with the school. Yes. Many, many have graduated and are serving in many, many areas, as has been pointed out by Mrs. Clinton. We would like to just contact everyone <coughs> of the former students who 
who are here, those who are listening to me here, and anywhere wherever they may be, to let them know that we're celebrating 50 years and we want each and every one of you to participate in some way. Whether it's making a contribution or being present at the various events which we're planning, we're just making an appeal to everyone who passed through this institution over the last 50 years, and we don't even know how many, there are many, many, to participate fully and to be fully involved. The name Lula Knowles is synonymous with healthcare in the country. The former principal nursing officer gave some 35 years to nursing administration and the healthcare system in general. The family of this pioneer in healthcare is making every effort to keep her memory alive. Family members of the late Lula Poitier Knowles made a special donation to the pediatric ward at the Randall Marl Hospital, which is named in her honor. She saw nursing as a calling and not just a job. She genuinely cared for her patients and excellence was her hallmark. And so we are very proud and privileged that the Rand Memorial Hospital has um, bestowed this honor upon her and left this legacy. We also, as a family, would like to give back because that's something that my mother did always. She gave back to her family, gave back to her community. Healthcare workers are excited about the donation and what difference it can make in healthcare. We would like to thank the Poitier family for making this donation. Ms. Lula May Knowles <coughs> was a serving nurse and principal nursing officer for the Grand Bahama Health Services and she has been a wonderful staff and we are so grateful that this donation was made to us as the pediatric ward can benefit from these gifts that were brought to us. These gifts will be greatly appreciated and will be used for our patients, for their parents and volunteers. We can read, we can entertain them during their time of sickness. And we just want to be thankful to the Poitiers family. It's time now for Ask the Doctor. Hi, I'm Dr. Monique Pratt. Welcome. Today we'll discuss a bit more on the question Sammy recently asked regarding hypertension. For most adults, we never determine the cause of high blood pressure. This type of high blood pressure called essential or primary hypertension tends to develop gradually over many years. Some people have high blood pressure caused by an underlying condition. This type is called secondary hypertension and tends to appear suddenly and cause even higher blood pressures. Various conditions and medications that can lead to secondary hypertension include kidney or thyroid problems, adrenal gland tumors, certain over-the-counter medications such as decongestants and pain relievers, alcohol abuse or chronic alcohol use, or obstructive sleep apnea. Most people with hypertension have no signs or symptoms even if the blood pressure readings are dangerously high. This is why it's called the silent killer. Anytime you visit a doctor, your blood pressure will be checked. If you've been told that it is high, your doctor will instruct you to check it more frequently and may even tell you to purchase your own blood pressure monitor so that you can perform checks at home. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away. Sports is up next with Ricardo Liborn. Everybody, and welcome to Sports and Ricardo Life One. Let me tell you that Jane Lord is celebrating. I know why Jane's still doing that, but anyhow, she got a birthday today, and I'm Warren Saunders. Jane, you do all for this. Anyhow, let's get right to it, folks. The Grand Bahama Tennis Association, the Grand Bahama Lawn Tennis Association, are united as one, and the aim is to revamp the sport of recreational level as far as tennis in the country, junior level as well. Kimberly Mullings has something for you on this one. The newly formed steering committee of the new Grand Bahama Tennis Association is focusing on redeveloping tennis on the island for all. Their aim is to keep tennis alive at the junior level. Committee member Lurika Russell, junior development coordinator, is calling on coaches to get necessary certifications. The coaches should at least, you know, try to get some certification 
you know, to help with that area. And also I think the GBTA can also implement like coaches education, you know, to, to assist them and, you know, for them to keep up with the latest techniques and stuff. Russell also wants former players to step forward. She believes in the each one, teach one rule. We need, um, you know, like past players, you know, who are, you know, really good tennis players to come, you know, and let some assistance to develop the junior development again. As an experienced player, Russell says there are numerous benefits of the GBLTA and GBTA coming together for junior tennis players given the talent on Grand Bahama Island. Grand Bahamians are the most talented people, so we just um, need to establish a uh, um, a junior development program. We didn't have the best development system, you know, but we used each other, you know, to help get better. The quality of coaching is not there, right? We might have the most talent, but the quality of the coaches is not up to par. To find out more information about the new GBTA's plans for tennis on the island, contact GBTA Secretary Jen at hotmail.com. Kimberly Mellings, Zednes Total Sports. Thank you very much, Kim. Well, the Grand Bahama Amateur uh, Softball Association had some games played on the weekend in Recreation Division. BMES did Polymer's 14-13 uh, Freeport games over the Kelly's team, 15-8. In the co-ed affair, it was Cooper's. They destroyed uh, the immigration 8-4, and Cooper's also putting away Grandma Port Authority Regulators 11-1. Grand Lucayan down immigration 5-2, and Pat clipped BUT 9-3 on the men's side of things. Tenors over Gateway 21 uh, to 3 and hangover stop GB Shipyard 14 1. Tenors holding off Huglo 8 uh, 10 to 8 and Express 13 Gateway 7. Guys are playing some pretty good softball here on Grand Bahama. Now, the Grand Bahama Amateur Baseball Association Senior Division uh, will take a break for the Bahamas Baseball Federation National is going to start on Thursday at the Amera Caribbean Baseball Stadium. Just to ensure that you know who is leading and whatever, let's go to the ballpark. The Grand Bar Port Authority Regulators and the Premier A's on the diamond. The A's unable to find the baseball, and that's a K in the book. The Regulators with the early lead in the ball game, Michael Sweetie not able to execute on this play. Well, the big bats of the Port Authority had a lot of pop in it as the A's defense also arise to the occasion. Premier down 8-1 to the Regulators and tried to get something going, but not like this. They shot the third for the out and watched the runner on first base. He gets tagged out as well. Aniko Knowles threw a three-hitter and struck out four batters. Desmond Russell and Calvin Fowler both two for three and also two runs scored in the win. The rookies and the Tree Root Sharks crossed the line and also started what would look like a pretty good game. But the rookies had the pop in their bats, base it to right field. It then got ugly for Tree Root, the chopper to the pitcher. This throw, this one's headed to outfield, center field at that. The rookies with the speed on the bases and the runner will score. That's a throwing error. The next batter rips this pitch to left field. Another run will score for the rookies. This is not getting any better for Tree Root. Base it to right, tack on another run for the rookies. When will it stop? Well, not on this play. The center fielder here simply is out of position. Here comes a run. Then look at another one will score two runs on the play. The meeting of the mound to stop the bleeding, right? Now it's the pitcher's turn. The wild pitch here, tack on another run. The rookies clobber tree root sharks 11-0. Alex beating two for three with two triples in this game. Just for the record, tree root have three wins and a loss. And the rookies also are three and one. And they're getting ready for the Baseball Nationals, folks. That'll be actually starting on Thursday. They got the meeting on Wednesday at 8.30 to get the technical things out of the place. And we've got you from start to finish as far as coverage of the BBF Nationals. Let's look at sports.